Hello, my name is uh, Henrik Manson, and uh, I've been the leader of the Cities uh, Project, which I'll tell you a little bit about here. The Cities Project is a large uh, project which has been paid by Innovation Fund Denmark, and uh, the Cities city stands for Center for IT Intelligent Energy Systems. And I'm coming from DTU, more specifically, I'm from Applied Mathematics and Computer Science. And here you can find a link to the city's project and also my homepage. What I'll talk about now is the importance of uh, having a spatial temporal look on, uh, uh, in a hierarchical setting for operating future energy systems. So what we need to ensure is a coherency between all temporal and spatial scales. We need, for instance, to be able to ensure that future methods for demand response enabled by forecasting and control are taken into account in uh, planning of a future energy system, for instance, in 2050. We need also to ensure that uh, the low level part of the system with the appliances, the, the buildings, the b cities and districts are connected to the high level markets and the balance responsible parties on the, in the, which ensure the high level integration. So we need to ensure that this uh, spatial and temporal scales are connected. And this has been one of the key elements of the city's project to ensure a coherent uh, interplay between all these uh, temporal and spatial scales. This um, plot shows that uh, a spatial scale and a temporal scale, and what we need to ensure is that there is a connection between the buildings, the appliances, the city, the, the country, the continent, and we do this by uh, uh, using models uh, based on data and optimization, communication technologies on a lot of different uh, scales, both for planning, long-term forecasting, simulation, and for the operations seconds ahead. And all this is implemented in a framework which we call Smart Energy Operating System, which is a framework for implementing test and develop solutions for flexible and integrated energy systems at all scales. And these tools are highly data-driven uh, tools, so they are based on digitalization and also sector coupling. One of the things we need to ensure also is that the customers in the future energy systems are uh, not being subject to, to requirements which are unreasonable. In many implementations, we see a uh, requirement, a lot of technical requirements on software which are put on the end user side, on the washing machine, the uh, electrical vehicle, and so on. We also see that in some uh, cases, they need to sign a contract of, with 30 pages in order to be able to to deliver the flexibility which is needed for the future low carbon society uh, and for helping the grid to integrate more wind and solar power. Uh, and of course, it also has to be uh, reasonable when it comes to the procedures. Uh, it has to be simple. I think it has to be automated. And we also need to ensure that the charges involved in that are not uh, disproportionate or not too high. Because it's very important that the consumers uh, are able to deliver the flexibility we need uh, for, for, for integration of uh, wind and solar power, because in the future, uh, the central power plant will be gone and the flexibility has to be delivered by the, by the consumer side. This is a picture of the smart energy operating system. In this version, it focuses a bit on, on the power system. But this is essentially a framework which contains uh, four level, uh, four, uh, four layers. 
So it somehow links uh, the building, the washing machine, the coffee machine to the market uh, at the higher level. And some of the elements, some of the important elements in the smart energy operating system is that we can provide both two-way communication, but most importantly, we are now focusing more and more on just broadcasting a price, a real-time price to the end users. What we have seen, for instance, is for instance, for a wastewater treatment plant, they can provide a lot of flexibility. But in the first implementation, we uh, had a classical setup with a two-way communication system where the power, where the aggregator could turn off the use of electricity on wastewater treatment plants. But that didn't really work. Uh, but today, where we in our implementation simply broadcast the price, then uh, the system operator at the wastewater treatment plant are able to take into account that his first priority is to avoid water in the street of the city. Second priority is maybe to avoid dirty water in the sea. And then only the third priority is to deliver flexibility to, to, the, uh, to the grid. So the system here is a hierarchy of models which has integrated forecasting and control technologies. Uh, and uh, we uh, ensure that uh, the models between the different levels are able to, uh, to, to, to uh, interact and that they, we provide coherent descriptions and forecasts on all the different uh, levels. So let me just illustrate how it looks like at the two lower levels uh, in, in the smart energy system. That means this level. Let's consider uh, some elements here which are just buildings. I'll come back to that. Here on this, the next level, we are operating the low voltage grid to the district. And of course, one of the things we would like to do in this uh, district is to avoid peak shaving because we, have capacity, we might have capacity issues with the grid. So if the consumers react to the price which we call P, then we can say that we want a, a load which is below some, uh, which are following some reference load. So we do some peak shaving. Uh, and uh, what we can do is uh, we can then divide, develop a control which sends the price uh, such that the, the, the actual load follows this reference. This is one example of a setting where we are using uh, machine learning and uh, data-driven methods because the relationship between a price and a load is very, very complicated. And that's something which only can be established by using statistics and data-driven methods. Also, this reference here set can be the voltage. And if we change the, the load, then we can also change the voltage. So we're using this machinery we can actually select the price so we can control the voltage in the low voltage uh, DSO uh, uh, area. And the price from this level is then broadcasted to all the houses on the street, which then use a controller which typically minimizes the cost. So this is typically what we call uh, model-based, uh, model predictive control setting. And for buildings, the models are actually quite, non, uh, quite linear, so we are in many cases able to set up the models uh, uh, parametrically and describe like this. So this shows the two lower layers layer of the smart energy operating system. So this is essentially two coupled, uh, two control problems which are interlinked. On the higher level, we are using market-based methods. So this illustrates the principles in the smart energy operating system. If we really zoom out and consider Denmark or Scandinavia, and we consider day ahead, long term in the future, then we bid into the market. And in the market, we do the clearing after the bidding. But if we then zoom in on a district, on a city, or on a household, then we have some purpose-based uh, control technologies which are aiming at following a reference. Maybe the voltage, maybe doing peak shaving. And based on that, we find the optimal price, which we send down 
to the lower level, which basically are minimizing the total cost. So the total setting in our smart energy operating system is a nested system of bidding and clearing and optimization related to that and different type of control-based methods which are implemented depending on uh, the, the zoom level we actually uh, looking into. Going from a house, district, city up to the, uh, the country level, for instance. This has also been the main idea in, uh, behind the new digitalization hub for integrated energy systems, which, has, uh, which we have implemented in Denmark. And we saw a need for doing that when we passed something like 50% fluctuating renewables in our power system. This digitalization hub is called Center Denmark, and it's now a European digital uh, hub for smart energy system as well. So the idea about Center Denmark, which are located in Fire Asia, in, uh, almost centrally in Denmark, is to be able to control load all around in Denmark or provide uh, services, uh, smart energy service, or in any way of Denmark, but also other, way, other areas in the world by using uh, this spatial-temporal uh, uh, thinking. So this is a control room of Center Denmark, which shows that we can look at the world, Europe, the country, we can even zoom in on a district or area of the city or even on a house with a different type of uh, uses in the house. So what we are using in this setting is again the spatial temporal layout. And we believe that this spatial temporal thinking is crucial for the digital transformation of the energy systems for the low carbon future. Thanks a lot for your attention.